Hello and welcome to McRoberts Live Bite Sized, where we cover the key issues of the day in a short question and answer format. Today's Bite Sized episode is part of our COVID-19 series, which we'll be bringing to you in the coming weeks whilst the UK continues to live with the current coronavirus outbreak. We'll be aiming to bring you timely insights on the key points you should be aware of and action that you can take in relation to the issues affecting you as a result of COVID-19. I'm Karen Nicholl, a senior associate in our family law team, and I'm joined today by Susanna Brown, a senior solicitor in our family team. Please note this content was accurate on 11 January 2021 when this episode was recorded. This is a discussion of the latest legal position. It is for guidance only and not legal advice. In this episode, we're going to cover some of the changes we have seen in using the courts since the pandemic started. At the moment, court actions are going ahead, but there are a number of differences. This will include an update on remote hearings and what is required. We will discuss the hearing itself and what actually happens and what to expect. Finally, we will look at how this has all been working and whether remote hearings might continue in the future. Firstly, if we start with the basics, Karen, how are court hearings operating just now? Yes, so family courts are still operating just now, even in lockdown, but the vast majority of cases are being heard remotely. So this means that hearings are conducted either by phone call or by video call through something called WebEx. Uh, We found that at the moment, the majority of cases are being heard by phone call. And how does that work? Can you talk us through what's involved? Yes, well, first you have received notice of the time and date of your hearing. After that, it is really important that the court know who is going to be appearing. So if you're representing yourself, make sure that the court know you'll be dialing into the hearing and make sure that they have your contact details. A day or two before the hearing, the court will usually send you the dial-in details or video conference instructions. On the day of the hearing, it is best to get yourself onto the call around about five minutes beforehand and be prepared to give your name before joining. Bear in mind that there may be other people, including the sheriff, already on the call as you're dialing in. The Scott Courts website has up-to-date guidance on the procedures for each court, which is really useful to check before your hearing, particularly because each court can have varying approaches on how they do their hearings. So in terms of practical advice for the hearing, Susanna, what pointers would you maybe give to anyone joining a court call who hasn't done one before? Well, as you've touched on, there are often many other people on the call. So it's really important to know how to mute yourself and unmute yourself very quickly. Um, Nobody wants to listen to the background noise from inside your home. (laughs) Dial into the hearing from a quiet place, free of interruptions, so that you can focus on what's being said during the hearing. I would definitely test out your IT equipment first to make sure you're not going to be thrown by any technical glitches on the day. Try and be patient. It is quite new to everybody still. (laughs) Um, Something that can be quite a challenge is making sure that you don't interrupt others if you're on a phone call and if you can't see the other parties. So try to follow the sheriff's lead as they'll often try to manage that themselves. Also, it sounds quite obvious, but if you're going on a video call, make sure you're dressed relatively smartly for it. And are there any other differences? What about um, preparation for the hearing? Um, Parties are now normally required to lodge written submissions outlining their position two days in advance of the hearing. We would recommend that you check this with the court dealing with your case as the approach can differ slightly between different courts. If the issues for discussion are agreed or particularly straightforward, the sheriff might just decide the next steps before the hearing based on the submissions, meaning that a hearing might not even have to take place. The vast majority of documents such as submissions or productions are now just lodged by email in advance of the hearing. So for the hearing itself, Karen, what actually happens on the day? Okay, so the the sheriff or the clerk will address you first to let you know when it's your turn to speak. 
And when you are speaking, you should conduct yourself just as you would if you're in court in person. So the same rules apply with regard to how to address the court, for example, my lord or my lady, um, who speaks first, um, the pursuer side or the defender side, etc. If you have a solicitor and you need to speak to them during the hearing itself, I have found that um, depending on the type of hearing, it can be quite helpful to give clients my mobile number so that they can text me during the hearing if there's any points that come up that need to be addressed or I need to take instructions on a particular issue. I found that the hearings do tend to be shorter um, as just like before court time is still very precious and so things need to be said as concisely as possible. As in person, the sheriff will make a decision after the hearing and see if there will be um, further hearings taking place after that. You'll get a court interlocutor sent to you after the hearing, which is the court order, which says what has been decided and the time and date of further hearings, including whether they will be a remote hearing at that next date. OK, what has your experience of these virtual hearings been like? Definitely very positive, I would say, both for clients and for solicitors. Um, a lot of clients do feel very daunted at the prospect of going to court, particularly in, in the family cases that we do, where there are sensitive and personal matters being discussed. Having a call in the comfort of your own home can take away a lot of the worry from these hearings. Yeah. Also for very straightforward procedural hearings, telephone calls are so much more time efficient and you don't have the same court waiting and travel time that you would have in going to court for a hearing that only lasts five minutes. Yeah, there'll be a huge cost saving benefit for clients as well. Absolutely. There is also the benefit of formal dress not really being required, um, particularly for the phone calls. <laughs> Such a big change from wearing gowns in court like before. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I think actually though, linked to that point on the other side, some cases do really benefit from the, the gravitas of court proceedings in, in a building with everyone in gowns and especially in regulating difficult contact cases, for example, to stress the serious nature of a situation and the need for compliance. So that's, that's perhaps a downside to, to these hearings. Also, if you're completely new to court, it can be difficult to work out on a call what exactly is happening. There can certainly be difficulties when you can't see anyone and you can't be guided by the sheriff and non-verbal cues. And thankfully, I think we are all getting more used to electronic communication by Zoom, FaceTime, etc. So hopefully people will be getting more used to this way of doing court business. And hopefully it's something that can continue after the pandemic. Absolutely. I hope you find this update to be useful. If you are required to attend a court hearing, we would recommend obtaining legal advice. Attending a remote or in-person hearing without representation can be very stressful. And so it is important that you have the right advice to guide you through the process. For more information, if you have any questions or feedback, or if our family law team can be of any assistance, please call 0131 229 5046 and ask to speak to a member of the family team. Thank you very much for listening to us and we hope to look forward to bringing you our next episode.